Hi, I'm Chris Connors from CustomWoodCarvings.com and today I'm going to show you how I like to carve a lighthouse. So we have a cedar log here that is a little over three feet long and about a foot thick and for smaller pieces like this I take a 4x4 four four and bore out a hole and throw a, a lag screw into the bottom and then I'll go ahead and clamp that onto my hydraulic cart here. You can get these hydraulic carts for about 250 bucks from uh, grizzly.com or Amazon. So here's a picture of what I'm looking to do here. Um, you can see how the lighthouse is on one half of the log and the reason for that is the center of the log is where a lot of the splits happen. So if you can remove that center part of the log out of the carving, um, you're helping to alleviate any splits and checking from happening. Um, and so here's how it's broken up into thirds. Here's the first foot, second foot, third foot. And uh, I'm not going to be really measuring here. It's just to give help me have a visual. Um, now let's look at the log. On the log here, because it's a cedar or arborvitae or something like that, it has a lot of these crevices. So I need to look around. I don't want the lighthouse being affected by too much of that. So I made a circle right here. This looks like the cleanest part of the log. And uh, that's where I'm going to put the lighthouse. And I'm thinking that this deep one here is probably going to touch it, but it'll just give it some character. So the first cuts I'm going to make are right here. I'm just going to come right down in here and over and just remove all this negative space. Same thing with here. Take that little sliver out. I'm just using a regular, car, a regular uh, chainsaw bar for this. I'm using an electric chainsaw. It's a Shindaiwa 110. Pick this up at a tag sale, but uh, I'll tell you what, it works really great uh, for blocking out. And uh, you can get them modified with a carving bar, and I may do that with this one. I, I like using this. Uh, why am I using electric? Because uh, I just feel like it. <laughs> My, uh, I'm carving in a residential neighborhood, so I try not to uh, disturb the neighbors too much. And I don't like breathing the uh, gas fumes either, so this is a nice little uh, break from the gas saw. So here it is, uh, roughly blocked out. And I'm just going to take my bar now and just go up and down, up and down around the corners until it looks circular. And, uh, and go ahead and narrow the top. Um, but you can't just go ahead and narrow the top because there's some architecture involved up at the top that uh, I want to draw that in so I know where it is, where the railings are, and how the roof hangs over and that kind of stuff. So I'll draw that in first and uh, round it out according to that size and then I'll go ahead and round out the rest of it. Alright, so here's the top. I've rounded this thing out. And now I put a line right here. What this line is, is the roof is going to come down to that line. And then I've marked where the center point is. So I'm just going to go around and just basically make a, a cone on the top. Alright, so here's what it looks like so far. I just want to show you the technique I'm using. I'm using the top edge of the bar, okay? And then I just come along like this, take a slice, and then move over, take another slice and go like that. Now why am I using the top bar? Top bar I'm using because as that sinks in, the saw itself, because of the movement of the chain, the direction of the chain, is pulling the saw forward. So I don't have to use much arm muscle uh, to, to hold the saw or anything like that, or to guide the saw. I'm just making little, little subtle movements to keep it on those lines, but the saw is pulling itself through. Okay, so I've drawn in this line here. This is the thickness of the roof. And at this point, it's gonna sink in about an inch. This whole area in here will be 
uh, remove, you know, go in an inch. And then this will be the top of the railing, and this will be the bottom of the uh, balcony floor. So how, how am I going to determine how deep to, to, to do this? I'm going to switch to my dime tip carving bar. It's called a dime tip because it's the radius of a dime. And I'm going to use that as a depth gauge. I'm only going to go into the tip of the, the, to the tip, the width, width of the tip there. And then I'm going to go all the way around with that and that will give me a consistent depth then. Alright, so I've gone around, all the way around with this cut and this cut. Now to remove this section, what I'm going to do is take my bar and come up at an angle so that it meets with this line. So that I'll take a wedge right out of this top part and then I'll come down and do the same angle down this way. That'll remove a bottom wedge and what that will leave is this little kind of bump in the middle and what I'll do there is take my carving bar I just go up and down like this all the way around and that will remove all that excess. So here's what it looks like with the uh, wedges cut out. Now I'm going to come in with my bar sideways and go up and down like this. So it'll look like this. Let's see if I can do this with two. Okay, I'll just go up and down like this and work my way around. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I, I cut this line. Now I'm going to line it up with this right in here, this line. I'm going to visually come down about right in here and then just go ahead and cut an angle down on both sides. Same thing over here, line it up and cut down and out. And then just move around to the next spot, do the same thing, line it up with that edge. And so then I'll get a, a nice taper going. So I want it nice and wide here, and then go into the width of that up there. If I need to, I'll thin it out, but I, I can't tell until I make the taper first. Alright, so I've blocked out this, and you can see how they line up on the top there now. And now I'm just going to finish rounding this out, getting it smoothed out. I'm just going up and down like this, around the, the sharp corners to just to round it out. All right, so it's all rounded out now. So now what I'm going to do is start working on this base part here. And I found a good kind of clean open spot where I could put a door. And from there, it's going to have a ramp that comes down and around like this. Okay. So what's nice about this is the ramp is going around the center of that. Again, we want to try to avoid that center. So we're using just this wood over in this area. And uh, we're going to make a ramp go down. And I'm trying not to touch this wood on the side because this will become stone, boulders, and other things. Okay, so I just want to deal with this ramp. The ramp will be turned into steps, but you want to treat it as a ramp right now. Okay, so here I'm going to have a little door. Okay. Here's my ramp coming down, and when you get to this part, you can see I cut this chunk off, but then I do an undercut in here and just scoop that out with my uh, quarter tip carving bar, and that allows you to get in there real good. So I got this ramp that's curving around, and what's going to happen here is I'm going to keep, I drew a line here, I'm going to keep dishing this out in here. And this is going to be, uh, the, the stairs will eventually come to a, a water surface. This would be like a wavy water surface. This part that's bumping out here is going to be a rowboat in relief form. And then again, it's being scooped out so that you can make that 3D pop 